Hi guys, I welcome you all to day 15 of anthropology lecture series. So now today's lecture is Neanderthal and uh, it is very important as well as very interesting in the course of evolution. So now after this we will be left with only Rhodesian man and uh, Homo sapiens. So by next two or three days we will be able to complete this uh, chapter which was very important, has a lot of weightage in the exam. So uh, let's get started. Now Neanderthal man, this is very interesting. Now as you can see from the picture here also, the person now has started to look a lot like a human. Right, so this picture also depicts, I have put in these pictures for you to create a visual understanding. Now this, if this man today comes to me, I would not feel that this is not like a homo sapien, right? As as we can see from this, obviously these pictures are not uh, real, they are re these pictures are reconstructed pictures of, uh, you know, through their skull and through, you know, all of the anthropometry they they do these reconstruction of face ki how much fat this person would have on his cheek what is the diameter of the skull all of that right so let's get started now homo neander okay so now homo right homo erectus we are already done before this so this is genus homo species sapien okay very important and subspecies Neanderthals. Fine. So this is species sapien, subspecies Neanderthal, and it was found like 1.2 lakh years ago. As as in this existed, this uh, subspecies of human existed around 1.2 lakh years ago, right? And it was found in Western Europe, where it was uh, the classical type. So it it uh, basically had two subspecies if i have to uh, tell you it has it had two subspecies one that was found in europe and uh, most uh, most frequently in uh, france germany etc which was called the la chapelle oxa this is uh, you know la chapelle oxa is a is a place in france okay so it was first found there so that is why it was named on that place and it was the classical type the classical neanderthals and the other was uh, the other one was in the asia middle east uh, place so it was called the progressive type it had some physical differences that is why they were categorized into two different categories and uh, it was found first in mount carmel that is in Israel. Fine. So let's now start with it. So yeah, the Western Europe, the classical one, it was called the La Chapelle Oxon and Middle East, which is the progressive type, which was found in Mount Carmel, right? And uh, this uh, Homo Neander was considered to be a parallel evolution from Homo Erectus along with Homo Sapien. Now this point just leave it for now because we are going to do it in the phylogeny we are going to do it in the controversy which is covered in the in this chapter only in the further slides so leave this point either tak abhi we have understood genus homo hai species is uh, sapien and subspecies is neanderthal found in europe some part of middle east uh, two varieties of uh, homo neander one is the classical and one is the progressive fine let's move on to the next so this is like if i see a side uh, pose of both this is the neanderthal and this is the human so face anatomy uh, if we so see the cranial part not much difference is there but obviously this brow ridge and receding forehead is different the nasal bone is little different and you know but the chin chin has arrived somewhere down the line it it shows little chin okay so this is a little bit of comparison between the two so now let's go to the geographical distribution right so if you do not understand this map don't worry let me just first tell you and then we'll get back to this map if i make the african continent again wait guys 
बिकॉज दिस इज़ वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज दैट दैट मैप इज अ लिटल that map i had give i have given a more bigger version of this okay so only africa asia and this part i have drawn so this region this region which is also the israel and levant region and this region in europe basically neanderthals were found here in this part so if i have to like show it with a show show it to you with some some kind of highlight so i'll i'll majorly mark this region as the core region of homo uh, sorry homo neanderthals right this this part fine now neanderthal it is called because neander valley it is there in germany so that is why it is called neanderthals because it was first found in germany neander valley fine so now two categories we have i'll just rub this right and yeah so two categories we have one category is your uh, classical type which is here and progressive type which is here right so now this part of the map is highlighted i'll just rub it and you will see this part of the map this region is highlighted in the last picture okay so let's get back to that so this is your mediterranean this is your mediterranean this is your israel and this is your europe part right okay so now you can learn some important locations i'll just highlight them here okay so one is le mustier le ferrasi and la chapelle oxa these are important then here neander valley is there this is also important then you can remember in israel amud tabun shanedar here in iraq this is also important then you can remember i'll i'll just mark some few from my side there is a place in uzbek called tashkek tash that that is also important okay then you can write here mount carmel obviously very important then mount karain karian karain whatever it is just uh, i i do not know how to spell it properly then here sub saharan africa again an important location because africa you know eventually every species has originated and has shown its presence in africa so sub saharan africa is also important then uh, so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 almost 10 11 uh, places we have done so i think this much is fine so you uh, understand the geography now right where they were found mostly So now let's start with the progressive ones. They were initially discovered in the mid 19th century. Fine. The skull was, uh, you know, 15,000 years ago uh, was found of a fossil of that was 50,000 years ago. Fine. So now you can see the things are becoming lot more recent, right? 50,000 years is like nothing in the history of the earth and the history of evolution, right? so what what did we find we find uh, limbs of both the genders and shoulder bones so now you can also see that uh, the fossils that we are uh, f uh, finding here are of you know either full skeleton or uh, you know more parts we are finding because the history is not that old like 20 lakh years ago it's not like that so it's more recent so we are finding more parts of the skeleton also so la mustier you know uh, france may it's a place in france there also 45 years ago we had found a fossil of 45 years ago that was of a child and an adult okay and this site is used for dna studies now just understand dna studies because uh, if i tell you 
that today's uh, homo sapien for example you or me have around 1 to 2% of neanderthal genes so would you you know like would be like surprised you know who would have thunk that you can have dna of one of the extinct species right and this is even higher in the european population because as you know they were mostly found in there so they have like 2 to 4% of homo uh, you know uh, neander dna right so this place in france la mustier is used for this uh, dna studies only right mount carmel that is the progressive one it was first found in kibara cave this cave is in uh, israel so you can mention this also kibara cave and the fossil was around 60000 years ago theek hai uh, here at this place you know we have found the evidences of belief in supernatural and ritualism now how in the last chapter only we had saw homo erectus so were so evolved as a species they were you know uh, having some kind of a ritualism they were having religion they were doing a lot of things they they were you know uh, living in a society so how come the next uh, generation would not have those things right so this kibara cave or israeli sites we have used to see evidence of supernatural ritualism now how would we do it we can do it because uh, you know there were burials and we found burials in certain ways for example there was a there was a grave and there was no tools buried with the fossil no tools were buried making it difficult to comprehend because at that time you know there was some kind of belief in after life so they used to uh, put or uh, you know uh, bury tools with them some some sort of uh, important things that that they used to possess they used to bury that along with the uh, dead okay so this place we had found an unusual burial where there was intentionally no fossil buried with uh, tools so this made it difficult as to why this this was happen happening okay this is the first the first one the second is the Sh- shanidar in iraq there was an intentional burial with a individual tied up with ropes okay with his knees touching chin so some kind of like this position you know a person is not buried like this his chin was touching his knees like that so like that it was done so again this uh, shows and there were some polens on the side polen means they must have put some flowers there right on his burial so this showed that they had some kind of a culture some kind of belief in the afterlife some kind of rituals right then amud again in israel uh, they found a complete specimen of height 180 cm and cranial capacity 1740 which is like much more than today's homo sapien right so they were like much more you know in they could have been intelligent and they were like you know uh, had a cranial capacity more than that of humans so definitely they they were an intelligent species right if not more than humans they were intelligent so now uh, these are the features now there must be certain differences due to which they were classified into two different categories right so let's look at them the classical is the most uh, the european one and this is more like asian uh, one progressive so yeah so cranial capacity is 1600 here it is 1400 so you can see the european one were more advanced in that way then skull they had large and broad skull and they had little less broad skull nose again broad and large less broad then chin chin is very important because as of now we have not found the presence of chin in uh, the ancestors of uh, homo neander or you know any in any other fossils so chin is well developed in the progressive one okay and it is absent in european one 
body build is stocky that is uh, strong and stout you can say and here it is like medium face is prognathous and long and face hair is short skull surface is rough like uh, you know it is le less rough here like skull surface would be the upper part of the skull right uh, that was rough and there it is less rough height it is slightly short and it is tall tall not like very tall tall in comparison to classical okay then forehead it was receding and forehead less receding receding forehead would be like you can see here forehead is receding receding means going back from its original place right so you can see more clearly in this picture as well right so you can see like this curve right whereas this curve this curve is not there it is not like this so it, it doesn't go back from its original position right yeah so receding forehead it was receding in the classical whereas it was less receding in the progressive occipital was protruding that means it was bulging outwards and it was less protruding in the progressive so yes a uh, little bit here and there you need to remember it but by and large you know certain features i will say which you can remember it more easily than classical had a had more cranial capacity chin was lacking the skull surface was uh, rough right then your uh, skull was large and broad and so was the nose body was stocky and you know they had receding forehead and protruding occipital and they were short in height so progressive ke liye bhi agar aap aise thoda sa yaad kar lenge i feel it will be easy for you right next is the post cranial feature now post cranial features are more or less the same in neander you say homo erectus ke bhi humne dekha tha uh, different different categories of homo erectus almost had the same post cranial and so is uh, true for neanders also vertic vertebral column is sh uh, short they had strong ribs femur also strong with large head so this part femur strong with a large head and short and stout bones indicating powerful musculature you can clearly see that the person is short in height and stocky built like um like more of a strong build than than a lean than being on a leaner side right it's a stocky built then short height upright and erect we can see he is upright and erect fingers were robust that is means again stocky ones though short now i'll tell you see let's uh, first say it again the person is short in height stocky built is there femur is also strong ribs are also strong vertebral uh, bral column is short right so it shows a person who is more on a stockier built and had a powerful musculature now coming to the fingers that are short it is because they lived in colder regions right they were living in places parts of europe etc so in colder regions you need to have less surface area so as to conserve energy and body heat so this is the the two uh, you know rules allen and bergman's rule which are which we are going to do in the later chapters so as of now you don't need to uh, you know like put pressure on your mind ki ye kya hai what is it hum isko baad mein padhenge we'll do it later just for now you can just remember this now the controversy what was the controversy basically again the same thing where should we place them so now you can see they there is some kind of a bonfire and you know they are cooking some kind of uh, meat then there there some kind of council is there they're talking and you know doing something here a mother is with its child children are playing they are inside a cave so you can see there is a culture that's there right so controversy was simply whether you know to put them in homo sapiens put them into homo erectus or give them a different category so maba things that they were coexistent with homo sapiens that means they existed around the same times as homo sapiens and 
he believed this because uh, of the skull evidence that was found of the two fossils around the same time okay so this is the first thing that they were present around the same time as homo sapiens then in lagar valley portugal you know there were fossils that were believed to be of homo sapiens but later it was concluded that they were more evolved neanders that means uh, they were often you know uh, confused with homo sapiens because they were that evolved as species that sometimes even they were you know believed to be homo sapiens so after much debate research they were uh, it was concluded that they were neanders so this is the confusion as to which uh, phylogeny they should be put into right yeah now culture culture is like middle paleolithic so now homo erectus we saw that they were existing in the lower paleolithic period after lower paleolithic middle paleolithic period came okay where we were still hunters and gatherers but in the later phase of middle paleolithic some kind of uh, domestication of animals and plants started okay here we were pure hunter and gatherer here also hunter gatherer only but towards the end domestication somewhere started right after this will come the upper paleolithic period which in which we will find advent of agriculture and homo sapiens okay so from here the civilization started okay so the culture is the same last time also we studied aquilian and la moustier la moustier is a place in france so the culture which was found in la moustier same culture was found in uh, this uh, place uh, not place sorry neanders the tools are also the same hand axes which was found in the lower paleolithic also flake tools made with levalloisian technique now flake tools are like little 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 for example if i have this big uh stone just imagine so now what i'll do is i'll put pressure from all the sides to break this into smaller pieces so when i put pressure they will break from all the side like this and i'll get these small small tools flake tools which are called uh, which is called the levalloisian technique this is called the levalloisian technique and these are the tools don't you worry these this is the part of next chapter that is culture only which we are going to study and these techniques and all we are going to read it clearly there that is why see the these the culture part is a part in the next chapter but i have put in here because you should also understand if there were the species like neander what kind of a culture they had so when we will read it there you will understand and you will be more able to relate it right uh, so hand axes they had flake tools they had scrapers they had these all aquilian tools which were more or less found in the lower paleolithic also the same tools habitation it was in europe it was in sub saharan africa they were living in caves and rock shelters you can see clearly they are living in some kind of a cave then they used to do persistent hunting matlab hunting till the point they could uh, they would you know uh, tire their opponent or the the animal that's hunted they will tire him down and then hunt him then in de in deserts they they uh you know they were depending on both big and small game because like in places where there was abundant big game available tab to there is no issue big game means big big animals like bigger sized animals so it's easier to hunt one and eat you know because usme kya hai you are hunting one but usme itna sara uh, you know food hai ki aap bahut sare log kha sakte ho but small game mein kya hai like if you are shooting uh, sorry not shooting hunting down a bird bird kitne log kha payenge na so that is why but desert jahan pe scarcity hai food ki wahan pe ye log sab cheezon pe depend karte the and similarly in the coastal regions they were having fish also and they were having birds also because this is fine uh, this is this is uh, evidence that comes from the point needles that were found in these areas point kind of needles like this so from which they must be shooting uh, not shooting again i'm saying the same thing hunting down the birds 
and they were doing hunting from a distance now you need to understand as we move from lower paleolithic to middle paleolithic to upper paleolithic not only uh, you know skeletal changes are ha happening anatomical changes are happen happening but also tools are getting much more sophisticated the culture is becoming much more sophisticated the techniques are getting much more sophisticated so although the tools which were used in this uh, this lower paleolithic are more or less similar in the middle but the technique they have bettered the technique of making those tools for example when they were uh, finding there were uh, big pebble tools that was found in the lower paleolithic the same tool is found here but now they have you know polished it better as polished it better means that they are uh, now able to make it more pointed by you know like agar main bolu isko this is water bond or which is environment mein already present hai they are not doing anything to make this tool in this shape whatever due to uh, you know environment ki wajah se wind water inse bana hai wo waisa hi ka waisa use kar lete the but here they have tried to make it more pointed so they have bettered the technique similarly they they had bettered the techniques they were using uh, you know they were hunting from a distance because they could now make smaller tools not very big ones that were found in the lower paleolithic so they were making smaller tools which they could throw from a dis distance to hunt birds so this was that this was which they had in their culture and then they had clothing also clothing because we have found eyed needles uh, you know hum sui hoti hai na jisme sui mein aise karke dhaga dalne ke liye jagah hoti hai you know mothers also use at home to you know stitch buttons and put buttons on the shirt sometimes same kind of needles were seen here so that shows they must be you know uh having clothes or wearing clothes all also when they were living in such cold environment so they need to you know so they were adapting culturally so you can see from homo erectus to homo neander not much anatomy has changed the culture has changed the culture has bettered itself they have bettered the culture to adapt to that environment right okay so i hope you have underst understood the culture anything which is not covered here we'll cover in the next chapter so need not to worry about this now disappearance now why uh, it is believed why they must have got disappeared first uh, theory that is put forward is they must have gotten wiped out by the homo sapiens because homo sapiens a next category a more evolved category a who must have bettered their technique more than the neanderthals right so they must have wiped out the homo sapiens second is they must have gradually evolved into homo sapiens only like the line must be going like this homo erectus to homo neander to homo sapien like that then third over specialization of tools now what is over we had done it in the last chapter also uh, not in the last when we were doing the darwin's theory and all of that we saw clearly the limitations or what we can say the criticism of uh, getting over specialized over specialized when any species or individual becomes over specialized they tend to less adapt to the changing environment so when the environment is changing when the competition is increasing when you know climate is changing you need to also change for example if there is uh, they were hunting the big games uh, big game but what if the big game is no more available due to climatic changes now only small game is uh, available so if they are not able to make their tools according to the small game they will not be able to hunt them so this over specialization must have led to the disappearance according to some theories next is failed in competition of food getting from homo sapiens only so homo as it is believed that uh, homo sapiens and homo neander which is also like widely accepted ki they they were uh, you know present ar around the same time 
you know both species were present so uh, homo sapiens because they were less specialized and they were more adaptive they must have you know uh, you know they must have excluded the homo neanders because they were hunting down they were you know more successful in getting the food so this must have led to the disappearance of homo neanders and last is less number of offs offsprings and shorter lifespan so their offsprings were also less as compared to they were not like uh, reproducing as fast as homo sapiens and they had a shorter lifespan so eventually they must have disappeared from the face of the earth but you know it always intrigues me ki कितना कितना अलग होता इफ मोर देन वन स्पीशी ऑफ होमोसेपियंस वर टू लिव टुडे कितना मतलब द मनोपली ऑफ ह्यूमन्स ऑन द अर्थ वुड हैव बीन अ लॉट लेस दे वुड हैव बीन मोर कंपैशन टॉलरेंस एंड यू नो बिकॉज वी आर ओनली वन सो वी टेंड टू डोमिनेट एंड मोनोपलाइज द होल प्लेस एंड यू नो लुक एट थिंग्स फ्रॉम अ मोर एंथ्रोपोजेनिक एंथ्रोपोजेनिक विजन और परस्पेक्टिव कितना अलग हो सकती थी लाइफ अगर ह्यूमन्स के भी और स्पीशीज होते एनी वेज दिस इज मोर मच मोर फूड फॉर थाट सो लेट्स गो ऑन टू द फाइलोजनी फाइलोजनी इज़ वेरी सिंपल आई एल ड्रॉ हेयर वन टू एंड थ्री ओके सो दे आर थ्री हाइपोथिस दैट आर गिवन दैट दिस इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल होमो इरेक्टिस दे मस्ट हैव इवॉल्व इन टू होमो सेपियंस and homo neander being a transition phase between the two so this is one ki homo erectus or uh, jo baad mein homo sapiens ban gaye and you know homo neander was just a transitioning phase between the two the second hypothesis says that this was the homo erectus this was the homo sapiens matlab homo erectus eventually evolved into homo sapiens and there was a different line of homo neander which got extinct okay this is the second hypothesis and the third hypothesis is homo erectus evolved into homo sapiens and eventually one other homo sapien neander became another species so here they are considering homo neander to be a distinct uh, distinct subspecies than homo sapien but here it is considering neander to be also homo sapien only but homo sapien neander here okay and it became into different category here it say it is saying ki it got extinct here it is not saying it is it it has got extinct but it remains for example kuch part of europe you know they show neander dna right so Homo sapien neanders could be one of the uh, subspecies that that is even today present in Europe. This is some kind of a hypothesis that is there in the third one. Okay, so I uh, believe that uh, we have finished Homo neander. It was a very important, interesting, uh, and uh, you know very interesting part in the course of ev evolution. So please pin down what are your thoughts on the lecture. Any doubts, please. put down in the comment section below i'll pin down the disc, uh, the links of day 13 14 in the description box please do like share and subscribe and thank you